This week, we investigate an aspect of our disturbing world theft ranking, shoplifting. Who's doing it and how? Later in the show, a scam fleecing unsuspecting job seekers. This is Checkpoint, and I'm in Gepile Mabuse. A Gallup survey conducted last year of 134 countries revealed that Sub-Saharan Africa was the world leader in theft. One in seven adults interviewed said they'd been relieved of their money or property in the past 12 months. Here in South Africa, the most common form of theft is shoplifting. And although most shoplifters are amateurs, there are people or groups who are very skilled at it. Most shoplifters are amateurs who steal for their personal use. But there are those who resell what they take. They set off each day as if they are going to work. Klacho is a member of a syndicate that targets Johannesburg shops. They are the professionals. Klaho always shoplifts with her partner in crime, Matonsi. It's no secret that they steal for a living. Matonsi has even designed her own special shoplifting pants. After the break, do we have a culture of stealing? The starting point is uh, for government leadership in particular to be the role models. When we talk about uh, stealing, I think we've got to walk the talk. Retailers report that shoplifting has a significant effect on their bottom line. Although less than 1% of all stock is stolen, this can amount to more than a million rand a year. Here's part two of our shoplifting special. Worldwide, about 900 billion rand is lost to shrinkage every year. In South Africa, this amounts to about 7 billion rand a year. The Consumer Goods Council says it has to keep abreast of ever-changing trends. Shoplifters uh, go for those items that they can easily conceal, 
that's high in value and uh, that they can easily sell. Uh, we have found especially the NAN baby formula products is very popular, but also the Pampers uh, baby products and uh, as well as blades, batteries uh, and headache powders, tablets. Many retailers just don't have the patience to report every incident and so take the law into their own hands. And the out I see Police say retailers should report shoplifters so that cases can go to court. Any cases where shoplifters are, are caught, uh, what is required there, they need to apply the law. You arrest the person, you call the police, and the person is taken by the police, they take your statement. But in cases where the rights of the suspect is violated, where you find that someone is beaten, someone is put into a fridge, someone is made to maybe cleaning the shop, all those things, uh, the suspect himself or herself can also lay a complaint to the police, irrespective that he was a suspect or she was a suspect in that case. Wherever a person is arrested, we need to respect that uh, he is presumed to be innocent until he's proven guilty by the court. So it's up to the Department of Justice to prosecute that person. Retailers spend a lot of resources protecting their stores, but still the shoplifters keep coming. In one retailer's instance, in a period of nine months, almost 46,000 perpetrators were arrested. Our shoplifters seem to be fearless and don't always go for easily concealable items. Klacho knows how to evade CCTV cameras, which aren't always monitored. Honacho who mean a house ali easy scap ill. Hobano Honacho Nali Kemer. Hadi Bonsi Shopoka fail at the same time. Eakao champa champ. Hai champa, hai akakwa runariaka. Hai akakmo runariaka. Stealing has become a way of life for her, and it supports her family, she says. One day, her luck ran out. Shoplifters may get off more often than not, but at the end of the day, the five-finger discount affects all consumers. Well, shoplifting is a crime and uh, the, the retailers have to prevent crime, they have to protect their own property and spend a lot of money on security, CCTV cameras and other measures like electronic tags and whatever. And that costs money and we as the ordinary consumers have to bear that cost. Somebody has to bear it and it's not going to go all from the retailers, it's carried over to the consumers. Spa supermarket's Charles Lowings agrees. He showed us some of the shoplifting recorded in his stores. This video shows a woman getting rid of stolen items after she's already packed them into her jacket. Yeah, well, in this financial year of spa, we've lost just under 500,000 rand in shoplifting. It is, it is an enormous amount. But Connected to that is also the retailer need to employ these guards. He needs to install the CCTV equipment, the equipment towards that, and that all incur cost. Shoplifting is a crime, and you'll be prosecuted for shoplifting. Uh, the police will do all the necessary to put you behind bar, 
because it is a crime and it's also affecting the economy of this country. Uh, so we will not take it lightly. Captain Lucas Corza of the SAPS gave some tips on how to prevent shoplifting in stores. Big shops, they need to have visible security. Uh, someone who can be seen by, uh, I mean, their customers. This is also a help in terms of preventing shoplifting. Uh, they can also use, if the shop is too big, they can also use the so-called closed circuit uh, videos uh, where they can monitor it in a, a certain room in order to, to be aware of what is happening in the shop. Angelique van Bemmel from Secure, a managing and monitoring company, works closely with the police to try and get these crimes to court. With having CCTV, it does allow you to deal with it because you have evidence. Our best days are probably when we get told there's been a robbery or somebody's been stealing, a client will call us, we will go, we will take the footage, we will download the incident, we give it to the client, they take a disc to the police and that person actually gets prosecuted. A big concern of Secure is just how smart the shoplifters are. Within a month we pick up over a thousand incidents and many of them are shoplifters as well. It's not just internal staff. I would say that you know, shoplifting has become a big game and people are getting very wise as to how they do it. Shoplifters have become very, very wise as to how they go about stealing and it's like a different breed of people. It's just, it's, they're great. They're great at what they do, which makes us challenged because we have to be better. In this video clip, one of the shoplifters distracts a cashier while two accomplices edge closer to the till. And then one of them helps himself to 5,000 Rand in cash. South Africa is sixth on a list of countries with the highest reported incidents of theft. Businessman Herman Mashaba says we have a culture of stealing. I was unfortunate that I was born in a community of thieves. We used to steal water, we used to steal wood every day because we had no electricity in my, in my village. We had no the, the electricity. So to make fire, we had to steal, uh, go and steal wood. My mother would come um, to, from work um, and packing some of the stuff that she helped herself from her madam's kitchen. Neighbors, everyone around. And uh, the tragedy of it is that every Sunday we'd go to church. For many still today, stealing is a means of escaping the poverty that goes with unemployment. Us allowing a situation to prevail as it is right now, we're destroying families. The children, 10, 15, they've never seen their mothers and fathers uh, waking up, going to work for them in the morning. And that, for me, it's a tragedy because we're really destroying families. Tlaho grew up in poverty and decided stealing was the only way out. Business does recognize the social context of shoplifting. I think what is important is, is that one must see shoplifting in the social context. There's a major unemployment in our country, there's poverty, and there's a need that needs to be satisfied. And some of the perpetrators are really those in need. Herman says we need to start looking at our culture of theft, which he thinks starts at the top. I think for me the starting point is uh, for government leadership in particular to be the role models. When we talk about uh, stealing, I think we've got to walk the talk. We cannot just really talk about uh, us advising and asking the community, poor community, not to steal when the leadership steals. As for Tlacho and Matonsi, it's business as usual until they're caught again. After the break, we bust a bogus recruitment agency. You're with Checkpoint and I'm Inge Pile Mabuse. One in four South Africans is unemployed, so when opportunities arise, 
hopes soar, but they can just as easily be dashed, as Checkpoint producer Ndogoza Sindani found out when she went job hunting. With more than 5 million unemployed people in South Africa, job offers of any kind are pounced on by those desperate to earn a living. These adverts placed online recruit agents to begin work urgently at the call centers of big companies. Curious to find out why MTN, Liberty Life, Telcom and NetBank would recruit on classified site Gumtree, Checkpoint went to find out if these jobs were the real deal. We phoned one of the many cell phone numbers provided and made an appointment with Tony, who claimed to run a recruitment agency. He sounded very connected. So we're working with different companies at the moment. We're working with MTN, we're working with JC, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. We're working with Liberty Life, we're working with Saucy, we're working with Backcanada Life. So these are the companies that we're working with. But first, there was the small matter of a registration fee. For us to do that, you register with me uh, for the first time, you register with But getting the job would need training, said Tony. And he could do just that and provide a certificate, for a fee, of course. Uh, and then on the last day of the training, you would get a certificate, OK? Whereby you would have to pay some of the training for a certificate. In a building a street away is Call First Recruiters. Here, agent Balisa also offers training. Balisa's certificate costs 700 rand. She called it a placement fee. Uh, um, uh, there's a placement fee of 710. It's a want of payment. Once you pay that 710, you're going to receive a certificate like that one, indicating that you have received a training with the company called Callfest. This job scheme sounded remarkably similar to Tony's up the road. Balisa's boss, Sufiso, also told us that Sal C was one of their clients. We checked in with Sal C's chief HR officer, Melody Likota. She'd never heard of Call First Recruiters. Sal C does not have a relationship with Call First Recruiters. Next, we asked the professional staffing organization, APSO, if recruitment agents ever charged job seekers. Natalie Singer explained how they made their money. They make their money by offering a recruitment service to the client, which is the ultimate end employer. And the end employer pays the agency a fee for assisting them in sourcing potential candidates, uh, obviously interviewing them, verifying, etc. So they do not charge candidates for that service. Even under the current legislation, the maximum any recruitment agency can ask for applic uh, application or registration is one rand. Salsi told us the same. An employee or a prospective applicant should never ever have to pay a company like Salsi or even an agency for a job opportunity. So, could Tony and Call First Recruiters be operating bogus agencies? Checkpoint wanted to find out, so we enrolled for training, after which Call First claimed we would be qualified. But SAKWA, the South African Qualifications Authority, had told us a certificate from Call First was not recognized. Our next stop was the Department of Labor. Director Martin Rachivanda said the unemployed were often vulnerable to those out to make a quick buck. One thing that we always say to them is that before they could engage the services of these recruitment agencies, they must go to the nearest labor center of the Department of Labor to verify if this agency is duly registered and certificated by the Department of Labor. After completing our training at Call First, it was time to get that promised job. We were taken to a prospective employer called DNA Telesales. Uh, Bongani will let you know, right? Bongani will let you know. Do you know when I can expect him to let me know? By today. By today. But more than a month later, no one has ever called. And no one answered when we phoned to follow up. The Department of Labor told us it was criminal to conduct such an operation. Uh, but I must say that uh, we are in the process of strengthening 
uh, the, the, the punitive clause in the Employment Services Act that is going to be to is going to be uh, uh, effected uh, uh, in no time from now. We have increased the period of sentence to 24 months. We are smart on what action they plan to take against seemingly bogus agencies. We are going to go out there to ensure that all these agencies are registered with us. We accompanied Martin and his team to confront call first recruiters. We asked why they claimed to be recruiting for big companies. When I came here, you promised me a job at the companies that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So taking me to DNA is not providing the big company that you, that you promised. Do you agree? Okay, ma'am, um, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But now, to make it easy, because some other people do they don't much. understand what is DNA. Mm -hmm. But now we tell the names of the company that are contracted to. For example, uh, One Life Insurance mm -hmm. is, is, is being contra is co is contracted to, to DNA Telestars. But they don't need a relationship with you. Do you agree? DNA, they don't have a relationship. Okay, DNA, tell us. No, Liberty Life. Oh, Celsi, okay, Celsi, Liberty Life. Okay, Celsi, Liberty Life, One Life Insurance. They don't have a relationship and with us. And Life. Exactly. Okay. They don't have a relationship with us. But we have a relationship with DNA Telecells. In an interview, DNA Telecells told us just the opposite. There is no relationship between us, DNA Telecells, and uh, Callfest. We, we are a registered FSP. We cannot share a license with anyone. The Labor Department tackled Sifiso on the payment issue and the fact that the agency wasn't registered. Yeah. You have to be registered with the Department of Labor. If you're a recruitment agency, you have to register. With the Department of Labor? Oh, no, we're not registered. You're not registered. Next, Sifiso was grilled about charging job seekers. Who do, you, who do you charge? The work seeker or the employer? Okay, the uh, the work seeker, the work seeker, not the employer. You charge seven hundred rand. Exactly. Okay. So the range is fifty rand to start. Mm -hmm. Our training takes a duration of a week, mm -hmm. and then after it normally start on Friday, start on Monday, mm -hmm. and then Friday they write an assessment test. Mm -hmm. If they pass the assessment test, the following week that's when we take for job placement. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when we charge them a placement fee. The law was made clear to Sifiso. By law, you're not supposed to charge more than one rand. You are charging 700 rand. Okay. So can you see, you have been contravening the law since 2008, charging all those 700 rands to these innocent and vulnerable workers. Uh, we, since from 2009, actually, uh, we were not charging that much. Call First Recruiters was given seven days to register and comply with the law. In the meantime, they are still advertising and promising people jobs. That's all from us this week. Please do give us your feedback. Our Twitter handle is at checkpoint underscore ENCA. Make sure to check out our Facebook page as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Ngebili Mabuse.